sick. Hello everyone, this is Panda. Kind of, I am kind of under the weather, but runny nose, bloody nose, but I'll be alright. <clears throat> First and foremost, I'd like to talk about my last video that I made about uh, the truth behind the value and the financial cost behind being a photographer. Some of you do still do not comprehend that it's a financial cost to spend money on such software, hardware, you know, camera equipment, lenses, bodies, SD cards, batteries, tripods, modifiers, diffusers, soft boxes, and all types of shapes and sizes. And you guys still think that no one should be charging no more than what? $25 for a print in your world? Let me explain it in the real world. Right now, I'm on 23rd Street. Down the street right here is an art gallery. They are selling a 8 by 10 for $350. Not only that, it does not even come in a frame. It comes in what I previously showed you, what's called a mat board. So it's a cutout of any size of your print. It's supposed to be an accurate cutout, but it's not. But let me explain that a little later. So. They're selling an 8x10 for $350, and you guys want to complain about me selling a print for $125 or $100 or $150 based on the model and frame design? That's so... I like to use the word incompetent. So, with that said, everyone, <clears throat> I'm the panel photographer. Please do subscribe, like, and share. I'm only providing you some concepts. Good morning, Raptor. Good to see you. So I want to give you a concept why you guys do not know what it's like to be a travel photographer, a videographer, a photographer, a professional photographer. Because honestly, if I really wanted to be an upright just a-hole, if you guys to remember my beginning of my photography career, I was being a, a prick. Telling people you can't afford me, you can't afford me, you can't afford me. But now I bring down the prices for those price, for those prints, and now you guys are telling me that I'm still not being affordable. I used to charge more than three hundred, two hundred dollars for a print, but I used to charge more than one hundred fifty dollars a session when you want to get your headshots too. I broke all my prices down over the years, and I started to realize why. I don't want to be fair to the people, but I also need to be fair to myself. I need to try this out, evaluate the financial cost I'm spending into making and what I gained back. But now it seems like I may or may not have made this, this mistake because some of you guys swear on your soul that it is overpriced for what I'm charging when down the street right here, there's a gallery selling 8x10 for $350. Macho Macho, I appreciate that. Rapture, good morning. Good morning, cats. Good to see you guys in here. So, let me, let me emphasize why you guys don't understand the concept, or some of you guys that do not want to understand the concept of the financial the course, the spinning course, and carrying all this equipment around. That is a, that, that's labor. Having this equipment around is part of the job. It's labor. You're going to have to pay for the labor. Setting up, understanding, trying to get the composition, 
excited, understanding what to underexpose and what overexpose and what not to overexpose, is labor. And it's not something you can just, oh, let me go YouTube this shit. <laughs> no, it's not like that. You know, that's correct, launcher, launcher. You're an artist always and always have been. Doesn't matter what you do. A barber is an artist. Why? He went to school. He educated himself. He understands what trimmers to use, how to cut, what to use, and how to, based on his style, how to trim someone if they want special requests. So, same thing with, with photography. It's a special request. When someone wants something that you have, that's a special request. Even though you didn't price it, but that's something that someone asks as a special request. So, sorry guys, I just want to get this out of my head so you guys can understand what's going on. Cat Yellow Ranger, thank you for being in here. I thought it was Apple Cat that was in here, but Eric, good morning, Panda. So, t here it is. Going to bricks and mortars to buy the, 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 the necessities that I need to frame the image costs money, plus taxes, plus transportation, plus the labor. That means you literally have to get on the train to get here because, mind you, sometimes where I stay, I might not be near an art uh, supply store. So take it with a grain of salt, okay? I don't know why New York doesn't have a lot, but there's only bricks and mortars in this area, and there's maybe one in Union Avenue in Brooklyn, I believe. Ugh. Sorry, guys. I, it's all the, this is what I've been doing in the last two days, researching a lot of other stuff, but also trying to give you guys a sense that if you believe that a print is not worth $125, $150, or even so, my largest ones, I think, are 20, 20 by 30, no, 24 by 36, which is like $450. Okay, so let me tell you a history about those prints. I used to sell those size prints more than the 11 by 14s. This is brand new to me. I never used to sell 11 by 14s. I always used to sell 8 by 10s because they were easier and they were more affordable for people who can't afford, right? But I realized I need to step out of that because I'm losing money because I'm still spending the exact same amount of money that I would get for an 11 by 14 frame. <laughs> This is why you guys have to do your research and your homework. Because if you go to Bricks Arts and Materials, you see the same 11 by 14, but it's actually a 16 by 20. So I cut it down to size. So yes, I do frame, like trim it in a sense to make it look neat. So it appears to be 11 by 14 because it is 11 by 14, but there's always a, a black bezel, which you have saw on my Instagram or my community post here on YouTube. So, uh, now I'm trying to understand something else now. Am I going to make a, a, a lucrative profit for the next print? Because it has to go back into the business or the replications of trying to push out another print. So it has to go back into print. This is why you got to save money. But no, people don't think about that. They just want to assume that Oh yeah, you're gonna take my money and do uh, and, and con me into buying a print that I physically can't touch. I'm like, what? Well, you can't touch it. You can physically look at it on my website, which I have to store up now. But there's some complications with that. So I'm gonna tell you about that in a little bit. But in the store, you can actually pixel peep for you pixel peepers out there. Yes, you can pixel peep. I literally have a zoom feature where you're like, oh, my panda. You can literally zoom in to see how sharp in detail. And by the way, those are low, low res images. <laughs> those are low res images that you're seeing that you think is sharp. Okay. Okay, friend. Yes, I just surprised all of you. All those images on my store, like I said, third time I'm going to say it, low res. Because I have a process how I process it in after... Out of Lightroom, Nick Collection, or Photoshop. I have a process. I showed that technique. Why you should do this process if you wanted to achieve a larger audience and why you should achieve a larger crowd. But in some cases, it doesn't work for some people. 
But sometimes it works for me and sometimes it doesn't because some people are very subjective on the art that you take. Ugh. They're not very, it's, yes, they're also subjective about how you took it and when you took it and what gear you took it with. Because if you don't have the latest or the best lens, eh, really, you, that's what you think. I got videographers out here that think me using a 7D to use it on black magic, shoot raw, it's incredible without any complications because I wait it. Over time, Magic Lantern for the 7D or for the 5D Mark III or for the uh, Canon 70D has been a flu off and on some bad flukes and ups and downs. But now it is super stable. Video. What? I can shoot. What's the max minutes I can shoot? Because I shot longer than 10 minutes on that using 7D. Using my either my 15 or my iris 150. Yes, I'm talking about a good 15 minutes without the sensor overheating because you know what it was kind of winter and That was given in the coolant that it needed to cool down on the body frame because it is my magnesium, but there is some Way that ventilation is getting and I wanted the camera, well, ventilation in the camera because that heat is and all the parts and the components are also heating up. So, yeah, it, there's a problem with that. So, this is why the best time to do stuff is winter. And then I don't really use it on a summer because on a summer day when especially it's hot, dude, it can literally take from my experience using the cameras. And Canon, Sony, Nikon, trust me when I tell you, when you hack a camera... And you hack the sensor and you wanted to do something that is capable of doing but yeah you like magic lantern and you also achieving thermal temperatures to increase this is like a, a pc <laughs> it's like a gaming pc guys when you overclock something you expect that and some voltages on it so what i do is i bring a battery pack with the dummy battery that connects to a wall an outlet, a wall outlet, but that wall outlet at the end is actually plugged into that battery pack, which is supposed to provide me of two to three hours of non-stop power to the camera. But still, again, heat. Oh my panda. Sorry guys, got a lot to set. Bless you too. Peace and lovings for Mr. Round. Winter shots are the best, especially in the snow. Yes, they are the best. So, with that said, everyone. So, I wasn't going to go live stream for a couple of days because of these critics and these individuals. Because I do have to respond because I have to actually fight sometimes the good fight. And I, I want you guys to think, think I'm taking it personally, but I have to fight the good fight. So, I figured, like, let me just stay off. For a day or two, a few days, and then come back and see these these trolls will go away. But then again, I want to direct the trolls why you, you financially are not thinking this practically like a human being. You're practically thinking of this is not a f this is this is something that this is person never put money into ever in their life. They never bought a piece of artwork. They never bought a piece of uh, painting. They never understood the art of, like, anything, unless it's what they want. What is it, video games? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's an art. You got a skill for that. That's an art. But what about the art that you, people display, prints, paintings, specifically? And you don't think people should not charge for the, the labor, the, the, the financial cost to spend into the softwares? Softwares with the S. Okay, <laughs> okay, the hardware, oh, laptop, oh, powerful laptop, you gotta have a, today you can get a decent laptop with good power, but if you want consistent power, a laptop that you don't have to upgrade in two years, because most photographers want to upgrade two years, three years from now. Guys, I have my laptop for almost five years, and it's still rendering and editing 4K videos, and uh, Dimension Resolve, and Adobe Premiere, and editing all those beautiful pieces of work that you see. Now, it's supposed to rain right now. 
So, uh, unfortunately, it is going to be a rainy day off and on, but take it with a grain of salt. Now, for you New Yorkers, for you New Yorkers that want to be cheap, you know, for you tourists as well that come to New York that want to be cheap, don't expect me to give you something that I self-taught myself, which is labor. Yes, self-taught is labor. I went to school for something totally, completely different, but I do have a background on film and video. I used to be a rollerblader and snowboarder. What do you think we're going to do? I said, hang out with a bunch of all my snowboarders. What do you think we're going to do? We're going to film some stuff, right? So we're going to film some stuff. We're going to put an ad together. That's what happened over time. Then I got into the photography point because I want to capture it. We put on rollerblading and snowboarding magazines, which many of my photos have been. This is why I'm respected in the rollerblading community, but I'm also not respected in the rollerblading community because I do dislike how people behave sometimes in the rollerblading community and why sometimes they just talk shit and they, they just talk garbage to a point where you're not putting anything back into the foundation. You got the nerve to talk about the foundation but you don't want to put back into the foundation. You know how many times I have put it into the foundation and ask any rollerblader on my panda, we ruled a skate park <laughs> here in New York City. We had the skate park. Come on. That was the best time New York ever had. An indoor skate park. Rymel, uh, the Brown Brothers. That's why it was called Be Unique. We had a unique idea to open the skate park every freaking day, seven days a week. You know why? The rent was not cheap. Oh, it's raining right now. I hope it just passes really quickly, then it's like, yeah. Because it didn't seem like it's going to stick stick, because there's patches throughout the dead. But yesterday, the day before yesterday, oh my panda, the rain was so terrible and miserable. Ah, oh, I finally got to dry off. But anyway, the point of this, guys, is that when you try to judge someone for their character and for the art that they are doing, Judge yourself first before you start judging someone else because at least I'm not out here gang banging, treating women like shit, selling, selling whatever what they sell out here in the fucking streets. I'm sorry to use the language, but hey, New York, is, New York has been very, very hostile and very colluded with all this nonsense. And I'm capturing in these photos, but I'm also editing photos that I had in archive for maybe three, four, five, two years. Yeah, and now you guys are just starting to see it. I'm sitting on thousands of photos and you guys want to judge me for what? I've been to hundreds of places and you guys want to judge me for trying to sell my art. Wow, I feel like you have no idea how to actually enjoy your life. <laughs> I guarantee you, you don't know how to enjoy your life. What are you, miserable, you're in the basement, or you just go out, you try to, you look for someone, then you get rejected, and you feel like everyone's going to reject you. Sorry, friend, but I get rejected all the time, like you are rejecting me. But look at me now, I'm in front of you, in the presence on a live stream, telling you how it is. Did I back off? Did I, what, did I walk away afraid and cry to in my corner? No. I'm telling you from experience, you have no idea how to be a photographer and what it meant and what it means for us to be photographers. Because if you to be honest with you guys, photographer is part of our identity that helps our mental health keep in place. The more we do it, the more we can satisfy people because as a photographer, you learn over the time of these years, you learned that you make people happy and that is putting a, a smile on your face. You feel good about that, and that's what makes you a good person because you feel, you feel that person's emotion. That's a moment that you cannot take away from someone that you're providing. Okay, so now it's raining. You see how long this is last, but because this is not waterproof, this is not waterproof. So and last time it got wet, <laughs> we had to dry it out with rice for a few days. 
So, I have an idea. No, no, no. No. <laughs> Oh, my panda, this is harder than I thought I had it last time. Anyway, today is a good day for a bowl of ramen. It is, but I, I don't have ramen money right now. I'm not trying to do ramen today. Sorry, guys, but financially, like, I got other things, like phone bills and other things, I mean, memberships, fees for for software. I got to pay for to keep, you know, guys, come on. Can't do ramen all the day. <laughs> Not every day. We cannot do ramen. But also I wanted to demonstrate why why people want to make judgments because I'm out here and I'm also let's be honest guys. This 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 turn it up a little bit, alright? When people see a black man doing something positive, doing art, photography, the first thing they think is a scam. Let me let me explain. The stereotypical is why they think. Black people are always no up to no. Some people think black people are no up to no guts, okay? And as someone that's multicultural, not just black, but multicultural, uh, <laughs> I feel really obliged to say this: that it's disgusting that you still think that today, as of 2022, not someone me is capable of being a, a photographer. No, you guys are just in the hood so much. Really? I, well, well, what hood? This is in, in Japan or like Billy in Vancouver or what really hood? I don't understand what, yes, there's, there's hoods around the world, don't get me wrong, but like the way to describe it as if all minorities of color have to be in this. No, I see in this neighborhood, I see Caucasian Americans actually adopt black children. I see, but oh, oh but it was a problem with my parents adopted me because they were Asian, but. But that's, that's, that's creepy and weird. But it's okay for a white person to do it too. I'm so confused by that. I'm so confused by that. <laughs> but anyway, it's, yeah. And, and now that child is growing up to be something, maybe like someone like me, I don't know, and wants to do something that, you know, their parents want them to do it, but they don't want to do it, so they get disowned, and, and et cetera, et cetera. And now you want to build up your own legacy your own legacy and you and people have a problem with that see guys you got you don't understand legacy everyone has a legacy if you want to have a legacy you have to leave our trademark behind after you're gone because we can't live here forever so the, the trademark is leaving that influence behind <laughs> but I, I guess that's not a really important thing for some people right Right? <laughs> it's not very important to leave a legacy. Okay, then it, what, what is important to you right now? Your, your, your 300 pair of Nike shoes? Or, or your, 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 your $100,000 car? Or, or what? What is it? Your, your $1,500 smartphones? That's not a legacy, friend. <laughs> That's just things that you cover yourself with just to make you feel happy. Okay, what about making yourself really truly feel happy by leaving some, I don't know, traces of who you, whoever you are, a Brown, a Smith, a Jones, a, a Ranger, a Harley, Jim Harp, thank you for joining, Michael a Gibbs, a Gibbs, what, what about that concept, that's my philosophy, I guess you never grew up in Japan to understand that because you're not really, see, the Muslim side of me tells me the same thing, but my Buddhist side tells me, because my parents are Buddhist, uh, Japanese parents are Buddhist, tells me the exact same thing. So, I'm not sure if you guys take the time to meditate or take the time out to take it all in and just make sure that you don't release it on someone innocent. See, it's, it's kind of stopped raining and raining, but yeah, we got wet before, so I guess there's no... Playing. Look at that, he got see it. He got the professional pro lemon satin paper for that printer. I see you guy. I see you. <laughs> this guy. Walk right here. He got the pro lemon. I saw it. I saw it. 
So, yes, I've been doing Ramadan off and on. So, I promised myself this year I would do Ramadan three times in the week, and the rest of four I do none. Uh, the reason why, because I started doing Ramadan when my friend Hali, Hala came to Madison, Wisconsin, and we were supposed to be roommates, but he came too late to sign a lease. So when he was staying over while we were trying to find him a house, he was like, I told him the truth about my, my ancestries and my father. So yeah, and then they was like, why wouldn't you just practice it just for the respect of brotherhood. I was like, you know what? That's a good idea. So, yeah. So, but here in New York City, they also did it in uh, Times Square. I didn't want to go to Times Square because you had people or entities come and show their support, you know, for Ramadan. So, yeah, everyone came for support. But I didn't want to show up because New York, um, Times Square is, uh, Times Square is not my, that's not my, that's not my place. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. I talked about that already, guys. About oh my pen, I need to get out of here. It's raining. All right, guys. Again, everything wet now. Oh my panda. I get wet again. Oh my panda. This is great. This is fantastic. I love this. I love when everything on my live streams go wrong. Oh my pen it never 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 surprises me. Never does. <laughs> Every time I do a live stream, something always goes wrong. And that is life you have to take with a grain of salt. Uh, uh, this is why we got all this ready. So I'm gonna take you guys across the streets. Oh my panda. Uh. Hang on tight boys and girls. Woo! Alright. We're not gonna have that again. Not the motion sick. All right. So the point of this video is, I'm leaking my legacy, but I'm also struggling. Oh my panda. love the rain man but sometimes this is not the rain that I like I like the warm rain this is cold rain this is not something you should be standing in for a very long periods of time this is so Yeah, the temperature just dropped too. Oh my panda. I'm gonna go. That's how I got freaking sick now. That's how I got sick now. I have a fever. I still have a fever, but one old. That's maybe because I was in a warm spot yesterday. Ah. Oh my fucking hand on that. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna park right here, guys. <sighs> yeah, labor, and you guys don't wanna pay for the labor. <laughs> That's what I don't understand. So, with that said, everyone, so now you understand. For those that never brought a piece of art in their lifetime. Uh, now you guys understand the 
the hard work and the sacrifice and the labor and carrying gear, yes. Normal photographers won't carry this much gear, but we are a travel photographer or a travel documentarian. Yeah, you, you carry this much gear around just because you might need it you need it now. I do have an idea now. Since... Okay, so... Kind of a good idea, but kind of a bad idea. I was thinking about investing in another Pelican case. Because... I had that Pelican case for 12 years. And it just proves to me that the... the, the, the well, yes, guys. A Pelican case that is protecting carrying equipment is actually a financial cost because, uh, yes, I, it paid itself off already, but, like, it was, the, it was the smart idea to buy one of those because, like, those are things that are really hard to break in. So, keep that in mind. Not, like, you can see all the tests on Pelican. They put a, a what is it, a 12, an 8-ton vehicle on the top of a Pelican and still didn't crush it. <laughs> So, yeah, they're a big investment. Yes, they're ex expensive, but they're worth it because they keep all your gear safe. And you can put any type of lock on you when you want. So, I'm thinking about getting rid of the tip of, of that pack and just buying one of the, the, the original Pelican 1510 case because I, I like the original. I don't like the air. I don't like the soft material. I know it's new technology, but I, I really don't. But anyway, guys, the investment and the financial cost for all this is like, come on, guys. If you don't buy a print, you don't have to buy a print, but you don't have to be criticized about prices. You can support the channel and say, hey, I can't afford what you're doing. I, I, I never spent money on the print before, but uh, I never, I don't understand how much can you and why people charge that much. But now that you understand that it costs a lot of time, a lot of equipment, a lot of adjustments, a lot of programming, a lot of tweaking, a lot of settings, a lot of hard work, making locks, making filters, making presets, making everything. Yeah, that's a financial cost because you spend money on the software, hardware, the gear. You got to buy the right SSDs, the right storage. Now you got to set up a server. Guys, <laughs> and this is why I have so many SSDs in my arsenal. I have like six, seven terabytes worth of SSDs. And this is why everyone that walks by, um, let's say I'm in a cafe. I'm sitting here, I have everything plugged up. Now, I'm neat, but behind my monitor are a bunch of SSDs. And everyone's like, how many SSDs are there? I'm like, too many. Yeah, SSDs ain't cheap. Well, now the expense is cheaper. Well, depends on who you buy it from and where you buy it from. Uh, damn, it's actually raining really hard now, so I'm glad that we came over here. Look at that, it's, it's just poured out rain really hard. So please do subscribe, like, and share. You guys want to support the channel financially, there's a PayPal cash I Venmo. I don't want ramen today, I need something more hearty to eat, like a, like a vegan burrito or something. Yes, sometimes I, I, I do I do not want to eat ramen because sometimes it's in my week it's just too much and I always don't eat ramen in a week anyway. I just talk about it a lot because that's the best thing on earth, friend. <laughs> I grew up on that stuff. No, I didn't grow up on a cheap ramen. I grew up on a real Japanese good ramen in, in a nice Asian home. <laughs> We get the veggies, you get the, you get the right amount of sodium inside, not oversaturated with sodium like the American brands, no offense. But those Monty Chan's uh, cheap noodles you buy for 50 cents from the store, yeah, those are terrible. Those are bad. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of those. <laughs> Sorry, right. never been. Oh, now look at that, it just stopped. That was some ransom rain, wow. Ransom. So more says SSDs are a digital hard drive. This disc. Actually, nope. Nope. Nano flash. They are nano, not a disc. Nano flash. They are nano flash. With a controller, uh, like a South Bridge controller that controls the bandwidth, speed, cache. Yep. 
Yes, and Americans all yeah, the American brands also have too much starch. This is why I've never been a fan of like American cuisine as much. Unless it's pasta, because pasta when you blend two things together in pasta it, it yeah. But more says that yeah, because so the SSCs are expensive. Two oh, terabytes, like, come on. That's an expensive uh, natural. Oh, now, now look at this. The sun comes out. <laughs> oh, my panda. Welcome to uh, tw East 23rd in uh, Madison Park, which is actually called the Flight Iron District. We're we under, we underneath the iconic building. I don't like taking the build I don't like taking pictures of this building with just all this construction bullshit. This is not how you take a picture of this building. Whoever take a picture of this building, if you if you got it right, I applaud you. But we need to see the building without all this scaffolding junk. That's the real beauty of this building. It looks really nice without all this scaffolding. But with that said, everyone, people are looking at me and surrounding. Like, oh wow, he's YouTube anybody. Wow, that's a lot of fucking camera gear. Yeah, it is a lot of gear, and it's tied down to the thing and tied down to the wagon. There's no way you get that thing off. I, I did, guys. Look at this. If you try to get all this off, you like could be confused. Like, wait, this goes where? What? How did this guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want that off, you gotta take this off and that off. <laughs> Good luck, friend. <laughs> but anyway, like I said, as a smart, as, as a travel photographer, consultant, photographer, it is kind of insulting to hear that people don't understand the financial costs that goes into the portrait and the photography and the, the, the sacrifice and the mental sacrifice. Oh my pan, to deal with such clients? Guys, you have no idea the mythos part of it is that sometimes you have clients that are so incompetent and so unreasonable that they literally think they are in charge of everything that you shoot. They want to look at every photo, every, like, right, as soon as you take it, oh, can I see, ma'am, you just want to just go back, go back, go back, stay there for a few minutes or about a minute, then go. You know, like you keep coming back and forth. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's annoying. That's annoying. And then uh, make me look like Harry Bell. I told you guys that story. Make me look like Harry, Holly Berry. I was like, what? <laughs> but you're white. <laughs> yeah, she was a white woman acting me to make. I guess she was a big fan of Holly Berry, but I, I, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way I can make her look, especially her. On her physique, size, yeah, there's no way. Halle Berry is, uh, that's, that's, that's all, na that's, I think that's all natural. <laughs> but anyway, like I said, guys, I'm, not, I'm, I'm trying to put humor into this, but I'm also trying to put some concept to this as well. That every day is a hard, is a hard, every day as a photographer, it's hard. Sometimes you don't sell. Sometimes you gotta work on new other prints. Sometimes you spend days and hours at a computer. Like the other day, I spent half my day at the goddamn computer. I didn't even enjoy the weather outside before it rained. You see how you see how you see that kind of expense? I spent money on the house to like and to enjoy the day, and I didn't even get to enjoy it because I was on the computer all half the time, editing, modifying. Yeah. I had no idea how expensive decent photography gear was until I got into it. Yeah, that's what happens when you get into it. Oh yeah, if people think like here's the problem with the with the with the photography foundation. It's not a problem. It's a thing that consumers take as a problem. You got beginner cameras, you got intermediate cameras, you got semi-pro, and you got pros. <laughs> that's what you got. Let me turn this camera back around. That's what you have. You have those four categories. So people think you got a cheap camera when you don't have a cheap camera. And then when you don't have a cheap camera, they don't even understand the technology behind that expensive camera. Or the cheap camera. Because they don't understand the differences. They think all cameras are the same. That's the problem with consumers. 
And this is what's the problem with the consumer market today. And when it comes down to digital photography, like this is why B and H is good at what they sell. No, this is not a plug for B and H. But when I went in B and H, I can hear them telling consumers, clients, or customers, "Hey, I know you use this, but have you ever thought about upgrading to this particular? And you don't have to spend money on this. Try to save you money, but also try to give you something that you would be happy with." That's why I, I started liking more of B and H more than these other online websites. So yeah, so keep that in mind. But it's the experience knowing the gear, knowing what this is meant for, what's behind the camera, what's so spe special about that camera. It's like, oh, he can do this. Why, why, why this camera can't do that? Oh, because it doesn't have these features. And when you don't tell a customer that, they're gonna think you're lying to them. You're trying to upsell them because it's the same camera when it's not. So, but it could be uh, upgraded to that sensor, yes, because there are cameras with the same sensors, but based on who the sensor, like Sony, they sell their sensors to Nikon and to other distributors, right? So based on how they program that sensor to be utilized, because my dream, Sony today, well, back in the day, Sony used to hide what the sensors can really do <laughs> the same thing with Canon, like with, for instance, example, my Canon 7D, now shooting raw with Magic Lantern, and 5.2K. That camera cannot do 5K, it, it, that's what Canon says, but it can because it has the megapixels for it. So, <laughs> when it comes out of the video, it has the megapixels for it, it can do 5.2K. But I shoot in 2.5K and then downscale it to 1080p. So if you want to know that trick, that's the trick that I do when I do a video. So you guys are thinking your watch are really ultra like, for instance, the Central Park video. I shot all of that at 5, 2.5, 2.5K and then downsampling it to 1080p, 30 frames. And you guys were like, was amazed by it. It's, sharp, it's clear, it's sharp, has the right amount of contrast, nice, nice color grade. It felt like an autumn golden day. That's what it felt like, an autumn golden day. And that's what I wanted to capture, and it was successful. So, think about it, guys. So, yes, you can take cheap cameras sometimes. Because 7D back in the day was not a cheap camera. It was a very, very expensive pro photographer camera. So for you guys that are intermediate and don't know about camera sensors, so, and that's why I utilize the 7D. So that's for an example. So anyway, like I was saying before guys, if you guys want to support the channel, you can, but. So I was about to spit, and I saw these girls right behind me, and this is why, as a photographer, you learn how to pay attention to your surroundings. That's another tip. Always pay attention to your surroundings as a photographer. <laughs> Don't let your guard down. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Male or female. Don't care. Don't let your guard down, or bring someone with you. or. Do what I do. Sometimes exercise, good, get some training, go to the go to the, go to the UFC gyms or to the octagon boxes or go to a karate course or class. Because sometimes you're gonna need some of that. <laughs> Cause sometimes someone does need to ask what from the from time to time. Yeah. Especially here in New York, because you got some people like mm, like last night, all my panel. I was not originally in this location. Originally where was I? I walked from Union Square. I was hanging out in Union Square and one saw this evil looking guy was like, and then another guy was like, hey man, you, you, you need any cigarettes? You need any help? I was like, no, no, no. He's like, hey, can I sit down with you? I was like, no. Because he had the needle in his hand. <laughs> Fucking idiot. Like, no, you can't sit down next to me. No, like he literally just, I think he literally just finished shooting up.
this is why we always mingle. We always get, we always move around, and we never stay in the same space because this is this is ridiculous with the drugs and so. Yes, yeah, so I've been doing a lot of documentary, a lot of video, but now let's get back into the photos. Shall we? I want to get back into the more photos, but I was thinking about making a... What is, this should have been season five already of Lightroom tutorials. So now I'm going to make another season of Lightroom tutorials. Uh, but they are not going to be what you think they are. I'm not going to be physically talking. What you're going to see is my process, like I did to my other videos of season one, two, and three. And some of between them, what I would do is record my process and then upscale the speed or the duration of the speed and post. So you guys won't sit there for like an hour. You only sit there for like maybe 10 minutes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not going to, but sometimes my ads don't take 10 minutes. Sometimes they take 30 minutes. So that might be a, a, a seven minute video when I do the duration of the speed. But Give it a take. Let's see. Because I don't want to take a picture of this building. I want to take a picture of this building, but not with all this scuffering because it looks hideous. And I, this is, oh man. This is why we come to New York for. Capture the moments, capture the photographs, get it done. And when you get it done, make sure you get it right in camera first. So you can, like, okay, that's a little bit too much exposing. Let me dial it down a little bit. I want it to a certain point, but like I said, when I'm actually doing my prints, I'm also making some modifications as well. I use TIFF files. When I use TIFF files, I expose my images by, by half a point, or sometimes it'd be a point three, point four. Uh, the reason why I do that is because when you print out, sometimes the printer would print a little bit darker than normal, so always does do that before printing. But yeah, there's nothing else. That I should say about the financial part about it because and also all the trolls have been thinking that my photographs are or and I had to remove some of the comments because some of the comments were just I literally a direct threat to my well-being like literally people are saying things like well this is where your home is and I know where you are and I live in New York and this is what's gonna happen that's so a really temperate I guess a little temper tantrum that this person is doing, but an invite for me to kick your ass? Yeah, okay, bring it. I'm telling you, it's, I'm, not, I'm not a pushover. I'm not saying bring it. I'm just telling you, when you make threats like that, you started this, I have that documented, by the way. I screenshot it, I saved it in the archives. And the reason why I screenshot it and saved it in the archives is because if anything does happen, I can present that to police, law enforcement, agency, counsel it and say hey this is what happened yet I can support it like this guy from this this is how it all started <laughs> this guy was literally hunting me down <laughs> or this woman is hunting me down but you should be doing that why would you even do that to someone that's trying to bring your city to to light with, by selling your prints to someone in Arizona and California yeah you New Yorkers <laughs> it's so bad. It's like, wait, you don't want people to come to your city and show you respect? As photographers, that's what we're doing. We're getting people interested in coming to New York. We're not just photographers, but we're promoters. We are promoters promoting not just photography, but the concept of the city or whatever place that we have taken that picture, we are promoting. So therefore, the city should be paying us. <laughs> I need a check. But with that said, everyone, let's read these comments. Sometimes, what? Sometimes a celebrity happens to Action Kid. Yeah, it does happen to Action Kid. And he was just here a couple of days ago and went back down to Florida. Yeah. He was also being attacked on YouTube several times. So, yes, I know about that. I have seen it several times. Like, did that person just threaten you? Yeah, that was pretty messed up. Like, this is why, one of the reasons why he kind of moved from here, because the crime, the, the, it was, like I said, he said what I said, told you guys before. New York City used to be like this probably in the 90s, but it was so good. I, this is why I kept coming back here, 
And now you just don't want to come back here. It's just that it it, it, it took a dive for the best because you got generations, these new generation of kids with guns, violence, 19, 20 years old. Then you got mental health crisis in New York City. It wasn't that bad back in the day, but it was bad. But it has gotten worse than three years ago, four years ago. Homelessness has gotten so bad that, like, I noticed in the last few days, there's been more homeless out on the streets now than I ever seen during the winter. You know why? Because they burned up their shelter days. Oh, wow. It's raining again, guys. Look at this. Alright, it is raining once again on oh, my panda. The rain is never going to stop, so it's going to be like this off and on all day today. So I'm glad that we stood here and took the time out and get a little concept of what has been going on here with me and also about the, photog the art of photography. Not, this, is about, this is not about me, this is about all photographers. Videographers, artists, guys, would someone put the sacrifice, the financials, the liberty to put something together? Should, you should literally honor that person's respect and labor and time in doing it. It costs them money to do so. Nothing's ever free to do something. Especially photography, it's not free. <laughs> it's not free to do. You gotta buy a device in order to get it done. So, with that said, everyone, I'm going to end this video with that at this time. So, what's it? The marker, 52 minutes. I'm going to end the video. I'm going to put it in this. I'm gonna, I should make timelines of this. Oi. But, for me to do that, I need to actually start making the brand new videos where I only talk about a topic for about 10 minutes and then move on. So that's how it is. it's going to be. This is how you simplify things in your life. Don't do seven minutes because that's kind of confusing. Like, wait, was it seven minutes or eight minutes? Uh... <laughs> so you give yourself a timer. You put a timer right there next to your device. You can be your smartphone, your camera. Put the device there. And then put the timer there so you can like, okay, time to, I'm going to end this up, wrap this up. I got two minutes of this topic. Yeah, so with that said, everyone, and now it stopped. Oh, my panel. See? New York City is very bipolar. Maybe you do want that bowl of ramen. But I don't have ramen. I can't spend money. I can't spend, always spend money on ramen all the time. That's just a financial cost. But let me make sure everything is dry because it did get wet. <laughs> Sometimes... For this, uh, I noticed this uh, timber uh, rain cover. It, when it gets wet, it gets really wet to the point the water seeps to it. So the bag is, is showing its, its signs of wear after uh, two years now. Yeah. Since 2020? Yeah. Yeah, it's about almost two months. I mean, two years. So with that said, everyone, I'm going to back up a little bit so I can be in the frame. So, but yeah, everyone has umbrellas, but you're stopping here. Oh, my pen. Let me borrow your umbrella, friend. I walk in the rain. <laughs> you defeat the purpose of having the umbrella with you. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of people over there hiding from the rain. It's not that hard. It's actually not hard. It's just light rain. It's bizarre. Like... I don't know, maybe I, I, being raised in mountain areas like Vancouver, Winnipeg, and Wisconsin, some parts of Japan, like go to Hokkaido, go north. Oh my pen, yeah, it snows, it snows. But it's that beautiful, nice, soft snow too. It's not that dry, rough ice. 
dirty snow here. <laughs> right, New York? When it snows, it's just, it, it doesn't look... It has to really be a super snowstorm to make it all look powdery, powdery white. Powdery white. Powdery white, yeah. But with that said, everyone, I'm going to get going now. But thank you for watching. I appreciate you guys' time. You guys be safe out there. And uh, I'll I keep leaving posts today on the community posts. But I don't think I'm going to make another v YouTube video today. It's just... Uh, I'm just tired and I'm not feeling very up to par, honestly. Like, my appetite's not even there for like the last two days. It's like, so so. It's not very. Normally, I'm like, ooh, let's go get that. Let's go get that now. And they're like, eh, I don't want to eat anything. <laughs> but with that said, everyone, so I'm going to get going. I'm going to search around. I might go to a community fridge because I don't want to spend money. <laughs> Uh, if he had to wait there once again all day in the rain, I guess that must be a sacrifice. That's labor. <laughs> With that said, everyone, thank you for watching. Subscribe, like, and share. Make sure you hit the notifications if you got some support. The links are down in the description below. And oh, by the way, the link to the website print page will be in the descriptions below. Uh, but I will post it up a little too later on, on my way to East Village. See ya! Oh my panda, I'm so tired. I need to sleep. <laughs>